Today do we continue Sama Deity and Sama Sinkapa. <coughs> which are the Pinya group. <coughs> Sama Deity, right understanding, and Sama Singapa, right thought. <coughs> so 402 1, 402 2, Sama Sama Singapa. I will read first and <coughs> pay attention to the recitation. Katamaja Vikawe Sama Deity. Yang kau bekerja dokenya na, doka semudinya na, doka niro dinya na, doka niro dah kami ni ya beri berdaya nya na, yang wujud di bekerja sama deti. Oh tu dah tu sama Singapore, ketemu aja bekerja sama Singapore, nikmat Singapore, abjad bahasa Singapore. Awi sa Singapore, ayah wujud di Bekwe sama Singapore. So can you follow me? Kedama ja Bekwe sama Deti yang ko Bekwe doke nyanam. Doga Samudhya Nyanam Doga Nirode Nyanam Doga Niroda Kami Niya Pati Vedaya Nyanam Aya Vojati Begawe Sama Deti And then Sama Singkabo Kadamoja Begawe Sama Singkabo Nikama Singkabo Abhyabada Singkabo Awiyesa Singkabo Ayam wajdi begawe sama singkabo. We recite together. Kedama ja begawe sama deti yang ko begawe doke nyanam doga semudia nyanam. Doga nirode nyanam, doga niroda kami niyam, pedi bedaya nyanam, ya wajdi begawe sama deti, okay, kedama ja begawe sama deti. Yang ko begawe doke nyanam doka semulia nyanam doka nirode nyanam doka niroda kami niyam adi bedaya nyanam ya wajdi begawe. Sama Deti Sama Singapore Kedama Oja Begawe Sama Singapore Nikama Singapore Abhyabada Singapore Awisa Singapore Yang Wajdi Begawe Sama Singapore Again, Gadamo ja begawe sama singabo, nigama singabo, abhyavada singabo, awisa singabo, 
Understanding, understanding of suffering, understanding of the origin of suffering, understanding of the cessation of suffering, understanding of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. This bhikkhus is called right understanding. <clears throat> and right thought, can you follow me? And what bhikkhus is right thought, thought associated with renunciation, <clears throat> thought associated with absence of a will, <clears throat> Thought associated with absence of cruelty. This vacuous is called right thought. After is found in the right, uh, the path of right concentration. Buddha continued the path of the knowledge, Pinya, Pinya group. Pinya group has two right view and right thought. <clears throat> and Buddha asked this question, what bhikkhus is right view? right understanding <clears throat> and Buddha answer because there is such thing as knowledge of the truth of suffering such thing as knowledge of the truth of cause of suffering knowledge of the truth of extension of suffering and knowledge of the truth of the way leading to the cessation of suffering So in short, knowing the four truths as they really are is the path of right view. So how many types of right view? There are six kinds of right view, samadhiti, six kinds of samadhiti. So you need to remember the Pali to be familiar. Number one, Kama Sagata Samadhiti. Number two, Jhana Samadhiti. Number three, Vipassana Samadhiti. Number four, Mega Samadhiti. Number five, Pala Samadhiti and Pichavakana Samadhiti. <coughs> six kinds of Samadhiti, six kinds of right view. So Pala Samadhiti. Pala, you understand, fruition. Pala Samadhiti is the right view that accompanies the four Pala states. Four Pala, four fruitions are the results of four noble paths. Attainment of knowledge of the four noble path is spontaneously followed by the knowledge of fruition as soon as you attain sota body mega sota body fruition we follow as soon as you attain sagaragami mega sagaragami fruition we follow <laughs> so there is nothing special to be done to attain the knowledge of fruition. <clears throat> and also number six, Pichavakana Samadhiti is self-reflection. Pichavakana that comes also spontaneously after you attain 
the path and fruition. So no effort is needed to bring Pichabakana Samadhiti. <clears throat> so what we should strive? We should strive only for the first four types. Kama Sagada Samadhiti, Jhana Samadhiti, Vipassana Samadhiti and Mega Samadhiti. So remember you are <coughs> trying to put effort to attain these four right view for Samadhiti. <coughs> so Kama Sagada Samadhiti. You believe in karma. You accept the view that there is karma and there is resultant effect of the karma. <clears throat> Any action is karma and that action produces good or bad results. For instance, doer of evil deeds reap evil consequences. Criminals have to face their for their crimes. Punishment, the lightest of which may be condemnation by the society. A abusive language is bound to be replied with abusive language. A stern look charged with a will will be written with a stern forbidding look. Your happy smile begets a happy smile. A friendly greeting is sure to be rewarded with amiable friendliness. A well behaved child have acquired good education in his, in his young, young days. So he or she will grow into a prosperous, successful adult. If you follow a lucrative trade or industry, It will lead to wealth and prosperity. Unprofitable endeavors such as gambling, etc., surely leads to ruin. So, such instance of good or bad retribution following good or evil actions are within our daily experiences. Throughout the endless cycles of samsara, the law of karma prevails. Good action leading to good results. Evil action leading to bad consequences. As a result of evil deeds done in past existence, the person has to suffer evil consequences such as short span of life, various sickness, ugliness, poverty, lack of followers, lack of attendance in this present life. In this present life, you see many unfortunate people and evil acts of evil acts such as killing, torturing, stealing, robbing, daily lies, etc. Then in this life, we bear fruits in future existences. They will be born in inferior planes accompanied by similar evil retribution. 
as a result of good deeds done in previous existences, good results come to fruition in this present life. And you can enjoy longevity free from ailments, endowed with beauty, wealth, and attended upon by many good friends. You avoid evil acts of killing, torturing, stealing, robbing, and being well disposed to good deeds of generosity. You help and service to other people. Surely you will be reborn in higher existences, enjoying the fruits of these good deeds. Good results from good action and bad results from evil acts are evident realities. So you believe in this reality, that is Kama Sakata, Kama Sakata Samadhiti. That means right view that your own karma is your own properties our own karma is our own property karma sakata Yeah, wrong view and right view, wrong view that denies the realities of karma and karma results. The right view accept the realities of karma and karma results. So there is Tocharita Mecha Deti and Sucharita Samadeti. Samadeti right view and major deity, wrong view. Wrong view is the person denies the realities of karma and the results. And some deity, right view is you accept the realities of karma and karma results. The good people, are wishing for speedy realization and attainment of Nirvana whenever they accomplish any meritorious deeds. But this Nirvana will not be attained immediately by our mere wishing. Nirvana will be attained only in one of the higher planes which we may reach by virtue of our good deeds. And then only if we actually practice developing the Eightfold Noble Path, So we should not wait till future life. And we start now and work for liberation in this very life, in this very moment. So liberation may be achieved by developing the Eightfold noble path which must be preceded by its precursor namely the Boba Bhaga Vipassana Mega 
However, to develop the mega, the path, basic requirements must be fulfilled. That is the development of Kama Sakata Mega and three Sila Mega and Samadhi Mega. For people who take refuge in the Buddha's dispensation, Kama Sakata Samadhi review has already been established. As to the Sila Mega, moral path, if the lay people is uh, not yet already established in it, he or she may accomplish it by observing the precepts on the eve of studying meditation practice. So every time you practice meditation, you take you, you do observe precepts, that is basic mega, basic path. For the bhikkhu, they have to clear their, they have to purify their sila also. <clears throat> And after making sure the purity of his sila, Meditator should strive for attainment of one or two or three or all four jhanas. If unable to do to attain four jhanas, Meditator should work for gaining at least the excess concentration Upachara Samadhi in the neighborhood of Jhana. If meditator cannot walk separately for the Jhana concentration, he or she must try to achieve the Vipassana Kanika Samadhi, Vipassana momentary concentration. Because momentary concentration has the same characteristics of suppressing your mental hindrances as in excess concentration, you can contemplate on the four prim primaries, patuidadu, patuidadu, ad element, abodadu, wada element, Vayodadu, air element, Tejodadu, heat element. But this does not involve establish, establishments of concentration as such, but by keeping close awareness of the true nature of Nama Rupa, your Vipassana concentration automatically arises. But if you pay attention, many objects, or if you pay attention to the object, that are not easily discernible. Concentration takes a long time to come about. So you need to confine to limited objects, which can be distantly noted to develop your concentration. So we give advice to the yogis to start with the noting Vayodadu, their elements. The characteristics of air elements are stiffness, pressure, motion, becoming evident, 
in the area of the abdomen. As the abdomen rises, note rising from the beginning to the end. When it falls, note falling from the beginning to the end. So you begin with noting just these, these two motion, two movement, rising and falling, rising and falling. But it does not comprise all that has to be done. While noting the rise and fall of the abdomen, thinking arises. Many things to plan, many things to do. So that kind of usual thinking arises. So note it immediately, thinking, thinking. Thinking are very breakable if you don't want, but if you wish, if you want, thinking may long. So no, no thinking very immediately. The thinking will be disappear and then go back to rise and fall again. It's if some painful feeling appears in your body, Note that pain also, when pain subsides or when it has, it has been noted for some time, you can go back to rise and fall. And also there is bending, stretching, moving the limbs. Also you have to know bending, stretching or moving. Whatever bodily movement there is, you have to note it, then go back to rise and fall of the abdomen. When you see or hear anything clearly, not seeing, seeing or hearing, hearing for some moment and then return to the rise and fall again. By thus taking note of every phenomena attentively, your mind began distantly calm and concentrated. At every moment of awareness, you see two things. The object and the noting mind. The object observed, Rupa will be separately from the mind, Nama that cognize the object. So it is the beginning of your development of special vipassana jnana. That jnana distinguish psychophenomena from the physical phenomena by virtue of your concentrated calm mind. So this was the special insight knowledge referred by the Buddha, Kobinapara, Visesa, Sinjananti. Preceding knowledge is superseded by the knowledge following it. So you are putting effort to take note of each phenomena of rising, falling, sitting, standing, walking, touching, thinking, knowing, feeling hard, feeling painful. This is Sama Vayama Mega, right effort. You put in effort to be mindful of every bodily movement. You try to put effort every feeling, every pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling is very subtle. You try to capture every 
feeling. Mental states are many. You try to be aware of every mental state. And Dhamma object, you try to be aware of every seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and knowing. So mindfulness placed on this Kaya with Najita Dhamma involved in the practice of four foundations of mindfulness is Sama Stati Meginga, right? Mindfulness. And having your mind fixed on this, on the object is Sama Samadhi Meginga. Right concentration. That right concentration is also called vipassana, kanika samadhi, vipassana, momentary concentration. So these three parts, yesterday we explained, samavayama, right effort, samasati, right mindfulness, and samasamadhi, right concentration, are three samadhi making a concentration path. Then you start to know the object under contemplation according to its true nature. That is samadhi making a right view. And just after attaining the purity of mind, knowledge arises. That knowledge is capable to distinguish the sense object from the knowing mind. So this clear knowledge is discerning Nama and Rupa distantly as they really are. So that is the purifications of view. Then you start to discern the true nature of cause and effect. Before blending, you start to capture, intention, and you understand there is bending because of the desire to bend. Before stretching, you start to capture the intention to stretch. So now you understand there is stretching because of the desire to stretch. Before moving, you start to capture the move intention to move. And now you understand there is movement because of the desire to move. You see something and you capture the intention to see. And now you understand that because you understand that I see because there is the eye sensitivity from this eye area and object. I see because there is the eye and the object to see. You understand what is hearing. I hear because there is the ear and the sound to hear. So you start to discern clearly the law of cause and effect as they truly are. And you keep noting and the yogi discern with each noting the origination as well as the dissolution of every phenomena. You try to, you start to realize they are fading away of the, their 
fading away of these phenomena in permanent nature. You see both the object and the knowing mind fading away. And this phenomena of instances arising and passing away without any break leads to your com conviction that it is all fearful suffering, unpleasant suffering, via insubstantiality, uncontrollable nature. So such clear conviction is Samadhiti Mega, the path of right view. So Bhagavad Gita said that knowledge of the real truth of suffering is the path of right view. And when the truth of suffering you discern at every contemplation by means of their three characteristics of impermanence, suffering, and non-self, the task of comprehending the remaining three truths are accomplished. Remaining three truths are Samudhya Sija, the knowledge of the the knowledge of the truth of the origin of suffering, Nirara Sija, knowledge of the real truth of cessation of suffering, and Mega Sija, knowledge of the real truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. So if you discern the truth of suffering, other remaining three truths are already achieved. And when you meditate, you bend your mind to know the true nature of mind and matter, to know the true nature of their appearing and disappearing by way of the three characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self is Samma Sinkapa, right thought, the path of right thought. So the two parts of right view and right thoughts are grouped together as a part of insight, pinya mega, wisdom path. So now the three parts of right concentration, when you add it to these two parts of insight, or together five parts, which are classified as Karaka Meginga, Dark Force Mega. So these Megas are responsible for accomplishing the task of noting and knowing every phenomena. So these five. Three Samadhi and two Pinya uh, Karaka Meginga, Task Force Meginga in commentary. So Sila Mega comprising 
of right speech, right actions, and right livelihood has been established even before your meditation starts. Your sila remain firm, getting purer during the practice of meditation. So with these three megas, the combined total of eight megas known as the Popa Bhaga Meginga, Prikasa paths are being developed with each noting of every phenomena. The last one, Sama Sinkapa. The Buddha asked this question, Bhikkhus, what is right thought? What is Sama Sinkapa? Nikama Sinkapa thought on freedom from sensual desire, lust, thoughts on non killing. thoughts on non desire for killing thoughts of wishing well to others, that is Abhyavada Singapa, and thoughts of thoughts on non cruelty, thoughts on giving protection out of pity, that is Awiesa Singapa. So these three modes of thoughts are known as Sama Singapa, right thought. So it is important that we understand correctly this right thought. Right thought is explained as thoughts free from lust, thoughts free from evil, thoughts free from cruelty. Thoughts free from lust are thoughts not accompanied by or not associated with craving, lust, desire, attachment. So it is thoughts about giving, thoughts about renunciation, thoughts about being good to other beings and so on. And thoughts free from a will are meta, Thoughts with evil means thoughts accompanied by hate, desire to kill, or desire that someone be killed. Thoughts free from such evil are called right thought. The third one is thoughts free from cruelty. It is not injuring beings, not causing harm or injury to other beings. It is actually what is called karuna, compassion. So right thought means thoughts free from attachment, craving, desire, lust, and thoughts free from evil or thoughts of metta, loving kindness, and thoughts free from cruelty, thoughts of compassion, gruna. These are called right thought here. So how does it fit in with the practice or with the factors arising at the moment of enlightenment? Right. 
Right thought is explained in the commentary as the factors which puts your mind on the object of Nirvana. It is a factor which put the, your mind on the onto Nirvana. If you have a knowledge of Abhidhamma, you know, you will know the mental factor with the car, initial applications of mind. This Vitaka or initial applications of mind has the characteristics of taking the mind to the object. It is because of this Vitaka that your mind goes to the object or your mind reach the object or your mind climbs to the object. So here right thought means the mental factors that takes the mind to the object. If this mental factors does not take the mind to the object, your mind will not experience the object, so it will not see the object. So it is essential that right thought take your mind to the object. Once your mind is on the object, then there is right understanding. In order for right understanding to arise, in order to right understanding to occur, what is essential? Right thought. Right thought or these mental factors which takes the mind to the object is essential. So right thought does not actually mean thinking. Thinking of re renunciation, thinking of metta, loving kindness, thinking of Guruna. Actually, in the practice, right thought is the mental factors which takes your mind to the object. Even during Vipassana meditation, if it does not take the mind to the object, the mind will not be on the object. <coughs> if the mind will not know this is meta, this is mind, this is arising or this is disappearing, if the mind does not take your mind to the object. So it is very important factors in the Noble Eightfold Path. All right, thought is very important factors among the eight factors. So right thought is essential for right understanding to arise. So these two, right understanding and right thoughts, are grouped together. We say that right thought, Sama Sankapa, belongs to the group of understanding, that is right thought.
So there are three megas, basic path, basic path, precursor path, and area path. Eightfold Vipassana Mega is Boba Baga Mega, Precursor Path. When your Vipassana Mega is fully developed, it gets transformed into Ariya Mega that will lead to your realizations of Nirvana. So, Boba Baga Mega. Precursor path may be called forerunner, hurling to hurling the Arya Mega, which follows it. So, in other words, precursor path and Arya path form the first and last paths, respect respectively of the same continuous path. So to attain Ariya Mega, the last last path of the path, what must be accomplished? The initial portion of the Ariya, that is Vipassana Mega. Vipassana path has to be accomplished first. So in this manner, the last stage of the path, Ariya Mega, will develop by itself. So to give an illustration, if you want to jump across the stream, you should come running to it with speed and jump. Once you have taken the jump, no more effort need be exerted by you. You will land automatically on the other side of the stream. So you are developing the the Vipassana Mega, maybe likened to the approach to the stream with speed and jumping. And you are landing on the other side of the stream is comparable to the realizations of Ariya Mega in consequence of the momentum gained from your Vipassana Mega. So three Megas, now you are practicing, you are developing basic path, Precursor path and area paths. Basic, precursor, and area three paths. By developing them, you will lead to Nibbana. So these are four noble truths discovered by the Buddha, revealed to the world. Among these four noble truths, what we should be more concerned? We should be more concerned with the fourth noble truth. We should be more concerned with the fourth noble truth because it is the fourth noble truth that will lead us to the cessation of suffering. Now you are developing, you're very concerned with the four noble truths. 
right understanding, right thinking, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. You are developing these eightfold paths moment by moment. And finally, you will reach your Ariya Mega. So may you all practice the fourth noble truth well. May all yogi reach the highest goal, goal in this very life by developing the fourth noble truth, right understanding, right thinking, right speech, etc. By noting, rising, falling, sitting, seeing, hearing continuously and meticulously. By observing every phenomena occurring at the six and those, may you all be liberated from all suffering. May you all, may you realize the real peace in the very near future.